Does hyperbaric help those affected with CP? That's what we're gonna cover in this video. Cerebral palsy, or CP, is due to either abnormal brain development or traumatic brain injury, either in utero or during birth or shortly after birth. And it leads to changes in muscle tone, muscle coordination. There's often multiple types of developmental delays and movement disorders associated with CP. The majority, especially those that are traumatic in nature, are due to an anoxic event, an event where there's low blood flow and or low oxygen making its way to the brain. We've done many videos on a multitude of different neurological conditions, and for the most part, any neurological condition that is caused by a period of low or no oxygen flow, a partial solution will be adding oxygen back into that system. We've treated a multitude of children and adolescents and adults with CP, and we've seen great results across the board. Like any other neurological condition, the sooner we have access to be treating these folks, the more of a response we would expect, but we do see lots of changes across the board in almost everybody that we treat who has CP as a diagnosis. As we start introducing oxygen to their system, that system starts to heal, regenerate, and regain normal function. Why aren't more people with CP seeking hyperbaric oxygen as a solution? Well, one of the reasons is the research out there is incomplete. There's one particular study in mind where they looked at a cross-section of children with CP and they created a protocol to determine what is the appropriate pressure and percentage of oxygen for these children to be exposed to in order to see benefit. So there was a control group, and the control group was getting PT and OT therapies. Then there was a sham group. So the sham group had to be a control also, but they were to experience pressure. They needed to not know whether or not they were being in the control or the treatment group. So they were exposed to 1.3 atmospheres of air and that was called a sham. In other words, not a treatment. And then there were two treatment groups. There was a 1.5 on 100% oxygen and a 1.75 ATA, also 100% oxygen. So here's a graph that comes right out of that study that I'm referring to. And what you can see here is that the control group virtually had very little, if any, increased change. The sham group had a very significant increase in improvement from the 1.3 air only sham. Likewise, you'll see an incremental improvement above that at 1.5 on 100% oxygen, and then a small increment above that at 1.75 on 100% oxygen. The results of this study say that hyperbaric oxygen is not appropriate for children with CP because there was virtually no statistical difference in response between the sham group and the treatment group. However, Clearly, there's an enormous difference between the sham group and the control group. What's happening here is that 1.3, which is a soft chamber, air only, no extra oxygen added, is not a sham. It's actually a therapeutic treatment. We've been using 1.3 air for over 20 years, and we know that it's a therapeutic treatment. But because the design of the study called the 1.3 air only a sham, it's not considered a treatment. And therefore, because the treatment groups and the sham group had no statistical difference or very little statistical difference, Ultimately, there's no reason to use hyperbaric for children with CP. You can obviously see the problem. This isn't just this study. There are many studies in hyperbarics that have a similar issue where 1.3 air only was used as a sham, leading to the result saying that hyperbaric does not work for whatever the condition is. And so this is something that is pervasive in the field right now. However, we need to be able to read these studies and understand the differences so that we can determine is hyperbaric actually appropriate or not. If you're enjoying this content and you find it helpful, please click the like button, please subscribe and share it with somebody you care about. We really wanna make sure that this information gets in the hands of those who are looking for it. The next most obvious step would have been to create another study. And if we did another study and the only thing we changed was the names of these groups, we could have said, here's a control group, they're not getting any hyperbaric. Here's treatment group one, 1.3 air only. Treatment group two, 1.5 on 100% oxygen. Treatment group three, 1.75, 100% oxygen. We would have gotten maybe similar or maybe even identical results. And then the conclusion would have said something more like, there was over a three times increase in improvement at the 1.3 air only hyperbaric group. There was only an incremental improvement above that at 1.5 on 100% oxygen. And again, only a very small incremental improvement above that at 1.75, 100% oxygen. Therefore, since 1.3 air only is the least invasive therapy, and there's really no statistical difference 
between the 1.3 air only and the 1.5 and the 1.75 100% oxygen, it makes the most sense to develop protocols for children with CP using 1.3 air only being a very effective therapy, meanwhile also being the least invasive type of hyperbarics that we can offer. In other words, that would create a great reduction in symptoms and improvement in overall quality of life while also minimizing the consequences of higher exposures of oxygen. However, unfortunately, that follow-up study was never done. And so if you go to PubMed and you search this paper and all you read is the abstract, looking at hyperbarics effectiveness for children with CP, and then read the results, there was no statistical difference between the sham group and the treatment groups, therefore hyperbaric does not work for CP, you would have ignored the entire concept of applying hyperbarics for all of these children. Meanwhile, in clinics like ours all over the country, we see unbelievable changes in these children and adolescents and also, like I said, in adults. Of course, the older you are, the less likely we're gonna get the same incredible results, but we still do see changes. I hope this helps at least answer some of the questions with regard to applying hyperbaric oxygen for children or adults suffering from CP. It is appropriate and it certainly also does respond to a range of pressures, anywhere between 1.3 air only all the way through 1.75 on 100% oxygen. Beyond that, at higher pressures, I believe for neurologic conditions, we're getting to pressures where the risk of things like oxygen toxicity are much higher and they're unnecessary because we get such great results at lower pressures. Thanks again for your attention. Thanks for watching the video and we'll see you next time. So whether you're a chiropractor or a naturopath or an acupuncturist or a DO or even an MD, but you're looking at hyperbarics through this lens, the lens that I'm describing, which is applying hyperbarics for all these off-label conditions, this is the class that teaches that. And right now it's the only class that teaches this type of hyperbarics in this way, and that's an actual certification course. Check out hbotusa.com, and uh, right across the, the top you'll see upcoming events. You can click on that, and it'll show you uh, when our next courses are gonna be.